24-7 Science. Today we will review the scientific method and experimental design to learn about the epic predator-prey battle butterflies versus spiders and their webs. The first step of the scientific method is to state the problem. And if you're a butterfly, spider webs are the problem. The problem is a question that you want answered. Scientists have observed that butterflies have an ability to escape death by spider because they seem not to stick easily to a spider's web. On close examination of a butterfly's wings, closer, okay, super close, scientists have discovered that butterfly wings are covered with tiny scales, similar to shingles on the roof of a house. So the problem question became, do butterfly wing scales provide an escape mechanism from spider webs? Once a question of study has been determined, background research on the problem should be performed. This step helps educate the scientists about the problem and also helps determine if there is already an answer to the problem question. If no answer can be determined from the background research, the scientists will make a hypothesis based on their understanding of the problem. Butterfly scales have been suggested to serve several purposes for butterflies, including insulation, mate attraction, heat absorption from sunlight, and communication of distaste to predators. Since butterfly wing scales can be easily rubbed off, it's logical to hypothesize that they provide some defense from sticking to a spider's web. The third step of the scientific method is to form a hypothesis. A hypothesis is often defined as an educated guess. This guess about the problem question is considered educated because the scientist has done the background research into the problem and now is making an educated explanation as to the problem question's answer. In science classrooms, the hypothesis is often written as a formal if-then statement to make the hypothesis easy to test experimentally. For example, the butterfly scale hypothesis could be written as, if the scales of a butterfly's wings are removed, then the butterfly will easily stick to a spider's web. After a testable hypothesis is generated, the next step of the scientific method is to perform an experiment to test the hypothesis. An experiment usually has at least two groups, the control group and one or more experimental groups. The control group is the normal conditions that have not been changed by the scientist. This group will be used for comparison to the experimental group. The experimental group is the group testing the hypothesis and has only one change from the control group. Butterflies in the control group should not be changed from how they are in the wild. Butterflies in the experimental groups would have their wing scales carefully removed. The difference between the experimental and control group is known as the independent variable. The independent variable is the change between the groups made by the scientist. For this experiment, the independent variable is whether the butterflies have scales on their wings or not. To be identified correctly, the independent variable must always be stated as the difference between the experimental and control groups. An easy mistake would be to say the butterfly group with no scales is the independent variable. This statement is incorrect because it does not state the difference between the groups. It only describes the no-scale group. Again, the independent variable states the difference between the experimental and control groups, which for this experiment is best stated as whether the butterflies have scales on their wings or not. An important part of experimental design are constants, also known as controlled variables. Ideally, there should be only one difference between the experimental and control groups, and that's the independent variable. Other possible variables are controlled by scientists to be sure the data collected is only the result of the independent variable being tested. So, constants and controlled variables are factors that are kept the same during the experiment. Some possible controlled variables for this experiment might include testing only butterflies of the same age and species, using the same testing conditions such as time of day, and the number of trials in each group should be the same. During the experiment, data is collected. Data is also known as the dependent variable of an experiment. Data is considered the dependent variable because the data recorded may depend on the group being tested. For this experiment, the dependent variable is the amount of butterflies sticking to the web, which should depend on if the wings have scales or not. And now we can see the original hypothesis of the experiment predicted the effects of the independent variable on the dependent variable. Collected data is analyzed and conclusions can be made about the meaning of an experiment's results. In the butterfly experiment, it would be concluded from the data that butterflies with scales on their wings were much more likely to escape spider webs. In the case that the results of an experiment do not support the original hypothesis, a new hypothesis should be designed and tested by a new experiment. 
Please leave your questions, feedback, and topics for future scientific videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe for notification of future 24-7 science videos.